I decline to accept the end of man. It is easy enough to say that man is immortal because he will endure, that when the last sting down of doom has clanged and faded from the last worthless rock, hanging tideless in the last red and dying evening, that even then there will be one more sound, that of his puny, inexhaustible voice still talking. John Michael Boldra, that's the voice of my dear friend, very dear friend, very close friend, one of my closest friends, John. How long ago we met at the Actors Studio? Years ago, long maybe. Long time ago. 2003, 2004. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I have the honor to have you here. And I'm more than thrilled and excited to have this in my hands. The Stoop to Conquer. This is your novel. This is your first novel. First, yeah. Uh, and uh, this is a big achievement, John. I tell you, when I went to pick it up, when I saw you Tuesday night and I brought it back home, I started reading it in the subway, I said, oh my God, this is your book. It's finally here. And the reason why we open up with Faulkner, because you have um, his words on your page. Why is that? Why William Faulkner and why him? Yes, why him? <clears throat> I was very impacted at a young age that uh, in 1956, when he won the Nobel Peace Prize in Stockholm, Sweden, that was part of his speech. It's one of those great speeches. And I remember being struck by that particular passage I liked the rhyme of the ding-dong of doom, but then I liked at the end the puny, inexhaustible voice still talking because I've been talking my whole life and no one's going to shut me up. Right. And I believe that, uh, you know, as a communicator, as an actor, as an author, as a person who, who enjoys being a part of the, uh, the human element, that it's important talking, mm -hmm. talking, mm -hmm. still talking. I want to let you talk more. I promised to myself, I said to myself, Sissy, this time I'm going to have John, because this is, I, you and me, we sat together how many times? Maybe this is our fourth yes. time. And this time, I, I'm going to promise to myself to be a little more silent, a little more receptive, and more ready to the task. Thank you. Um, John, this is something, like I said, I'm only about page 76, 77. Uh, this is a journey of a boy in Hell's Kitchen. Uh, is raw and rough and true and powerful, and you just want to keep reading page after page after page. Can we give a little synopsis of what the book is all about? <clears throat> it's a coming-of-age story about a bunch of kids at the tender age of 17, going on 18. Inner city, it doesn't have to be Hell's Kitchen. As I say in the front of the book, it could be all the Hell's Kitchens in the world. That tender age when you don't know who you are, you're mm -hmm. very uh, impressionable. Right. You have trouble at home, you have trouble with intoxicants, you have trouble with bullying, you have trouble with self-esteem. You have trouble with image because you don't know who you are yet, and how could you? And you hang out with a group of kids that are all going through the same thing, and you think that for sure these will be your friends for the rest of your life. And of course, there has to be a dame. So the, the lovely girl walks into the picture, and, uh, and it's all the, the travails and the, uh, the stuff that you go through during that time, hoping that you'll make it out and realize that your life doesn't happen in one summer that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Right, how long do you put this together? Because this is a big book. How many pages? Uh, About I, almost 400, I, yeah, right? Yeah, I hand wrote it uh, because the nuns taught me penmanship and damn it, I'm gonna use it. I love it. Um, I started in 2000 and I started to write David Milch, the famous David Milch, uh, said to me, if you could uh, write the way you talk, I, I think you should write. So he gave me permission, and License. I started to write. Right. And um, 2001, when the World Trade Center was attacked, the flow stopped. Uh, what I did with this is I hand wrote Even it. Even with the cover, we, we can talk about the cover after. Too. I hand wrote it, and um, I never went back. 
I never erased any, I just wrote it and kept going. It was a flow. It came out of me. And I didn't push it. I waited till it came. And every time it came, it came. And then eventually I got around to finishing it. But then I held it. It's an interesting thing because I don't have any children, but I held it like a child. I, I was afraid to show it to the world. Right. I was afraid to show it to the world because I knew that uh, every aspect of it is me. Right. Lots of different parts of me that, that I didn't even know, so I can't expect anyone else to know. Right. And then I also wanted to hold it because I wanted to make sure I got it into the right hand. So my very dear friend Marilyn Freed, who's an actor and a director, introduced me to a lovely lady named Lois Robbins, who's an actress. Mm -hmm. And um, we got together and we started a merry little bunch to start showing it around town. People showed interest, but not the kind of people I wanted and not the type of situations I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I waited because uh, I'd like to have a say in it for as long as I can. I know at some point I'm going to have to let it go. Right. But by then, it'll be all the way out in the water. So, It's a brave thing to sit down and write, John. It's not an easy task. I don't, I don't care how gifted you are. You're a gifted man. I know your work. I see you in session at the studio years ago. I've seen your work in film. You're a powerful actor. Powerful, John. But I didn't know the kind of writer you were. I have no idea. I know you and I love you and I respect you for who you are, but I have no idea how good of a writer you are, Well, man. you know... <laughs> I didn't know that you were so good, so I good, I found John. myself at a point saying to myself, why am I still here? Mm -hmm. Why am I still here? Because when I was younger, and I come from a really good family and great parents and a good Your home. Your mother... My mother, Agnes? my father, my mother Agnes, my father John, Lord rest his soul, my sisters Philomena, Bernadette, and Charlotte. I come from a good upbringing, but I was wild. I'm just a wild child, and but you, you know are. that. Yeah. And I wanted to go out there, and I wanted to embrace life in all its forms, and I did, including intoxicants, including danger, including elements of, uh, of dysfunction that I've worked on since, mm -hmm. including rage. A lot of my friends that are in this book, it's a fiction novel, I use their names so that I can memorialize them forever. They're not with us anymore, and I still am. So it amazes me that I'm still here because through this journey, there's so many times when I should be gone. Mm -hmm. But here I am. Yeah, there's a, a page, I, uh, I swear to God, that I think I left the, I wrote it down, there, the times that you, well, the character, uh, Danny contemplated suicide. Yes. Is something that uh, Francis Francis committed the, the time that he contemplated to commit suicide. Quite a few times, actually. Quite a few times. Yes. Yeah. Because when you don't understand who you are, and you don't have any direction, and and you know, I wouldn't listen to anyone, as you well know. Right. Uh, I needed to do it my way, and I needed to learn how to do it my way. But I needed to. Um, Go through these experiences and go through these moments of danger and sex and drugs and rock and roll and Studio 54 and... But then left with, like F. Scott Fitzgerald said, that when you're left alone in the middle of the night, you're only with your heartbeat. Right. And as long as I could hear and feel my heartbeat, I knew I was still alive. So I knew that there was a reason I was on the planet. I couldn't figure it out. Why am I here? What am I here to do? Am I here to bet every woman that looks at me? Am right. I here to get in trouble? Am I here to rage against the system? Am I here to rage against authority? Am I here to just be a professional against or a malcontent? Mm -hmm. Or am I here to be an actor and a writer and ultimately a human being who found his place in the planet? What I love about this, John, is that it's an exploration of the dark, the Absolutely. shadows, the dark, because obviously all of us, we want to be happy. And we have to embrace happiness and love and family and values. But there's a lot of dark in here. A lot. A lot. A lot. I mean, for anyone who reads it, and I hope you will, buckle up, strap in, because I broke all the rules here because I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth of what, like... I remember the day Karen Carpenter died. 
and they said on the news that they found her in a closet. And I thought to myself, here's Karen Carpenter, this incredible musician, this incredible human being, mm -hmm. dead in a closet, anorexic, alone. What I did here was I tried to explore, there's a great song by Bob Dylan called My Back Pages. And it says, I was so much older then and I'm younger than that now. I've tried to go back and explore why I went to these dark places to make me who I am now. I know now why, right. because I can write about them. Right. If I'm given a role where I can apply them, I can take them down from my library and incorporate them into a character. Uh, but there's very few, in my estimation, stories or books that tell the truth. They well, what we think the truth, the truth is. No, the real truth. Okay. The real truth. Okay. I don't mean, let me, let me reword that because yes. I don't want to sound arrogant. Of course they tell the truth. But like you're saying, the down and dirty. The right. down and dirty. You didn't get so far because you haven't had an opportunity, but the character of Sandra goes on such a journey in this book, in this story, that the only other time I can think of a character that I've seen in film was a film called... Maria Full of Grace. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. And you don't often see... You'll see the guy go through the travails and the, you know, the rough of life, but you don't often see the woman. They, they hold off. And her journey here is... Whew, it's heartbreaking. And it's the character that I most relate to, which is really interesting, because I guess it's, it's that sliver of my, fem, my feminine side, you know? Yeah. Sliver. I said. Sliver. Sliver. Check that out. Sliver. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sliver. How many characters you have here, John? How oh my many? God. How many? How many? A lot. A Quite lot. Quite a few. And Names, they go, you know, it's... A lot of characters. There's Francis, the main character. There's Sandra, there's Sonny, Your there's friends, Benny. Yeah. The Benny. There's Clayton, there's Howie, and there's, there's a million parts so that I hope that if I get a deal for a TV series or a movie that I can employ employ all my friends in New York. And I can play the hooker, one of them at least. Well, there's a, there's a part named Carmen that, that I have you, you know, pigeonholed for if you could, if you could focus. If I can, can we give it a try? You're doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty damn good. Are yeah. you impressed or is it just we, me? Well, we have a history. I, mean, I know. We go know. around. Listen, I want to address my attention to, number one, the audience for people who are watching and I know they're checking the website, they're checking the Facebook pages, the YouTube channel. I appreciate the support because it, there's a lot of people checking uh, my interviews and that's a joy. And another thing that I can address maybe because Alex, one of my associate producers, he's in the house. Maybe he can take a little walk around the corner and just pit some, have some quiet, peace and quiet. I'm, I'm, I'm having an interview on a one on one and everybody keeps going back and forth. But that's and called that's called part life. Of life. That's no, called no, that's life. okay. I know. But if I you see when we can be in control, John, we must be But you see what I've learned control. what I've learned in life. You see now the I difference the difference between silence. us right now is that what I've learned in life is that I used to think that I was in control. And I'm not in control. But we're not. But we'll try to be a little bit, John. You mean controlled silence? But, well, yeah, because when you lose control, what happens? Chaos and anarchy. What happens when we lose control? Chaos what happens, and anarchy. Right? Yes. But let's get back to this, because we're not here for long. No, that we're here for nice long. That was a nice little spiel. No, no, no. You, let's get, you need let's to recharge. Focus, we need to recharge. Focus, no, please. No, we're going back in the Thank duty. Thank you. Sandra. We were with Sandra. Yeah. You were talking about Sandra. Yeah. Now, the characters that you have... All of them are based on. It's a fictitious what? novel. Yes. Francis is me. Francis is you. We know that. I know that. Sandra is the girl who crushed me at a very young age and ruined me for every she woman broke on the planet. Your heart, crushed me. John. Molido. 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 me. Uh huh. She crushed me. Molido. 100%. Ruined me for every woman on the planet. Yeah, I like that. Let's talk turkey. Let's uh, talk turkey, John. A lot of the characters in there, my friend Howie, my friend Clayton, and a lot of the other characters are my, my buddies uh, who, who haven't made it. Uh, my friend Howie Nesto, my friend Clayton Brooks, who didn't make it, who are no longer with us. The character of Benny. Benny is a combination of my friend Paulie the Iceman, Paulie Palmadessa, 
uh, my father, my Uncle Patsy. My Uncle Patsy's in there. There's a lot of characters, a lot of the people along the way that I met. Right. Uh, and there's the real journey into hell. I mean, this is, this is basically where I was at where I, if, if I was a pilot in an airplane, instead of flying in the clouds, I basically pointed it towards the ground and stepped on the accelerator. And through the grace of God, through the epiphany that I had in my life to turn my life around, I shouldn't be here. I should have crashed into the ground and be gone. I should have been a smoky spot on the ground. Brother, you're here. I'm here. And you're a brave man. You have a lot of courage and honor. We talked about that before. <clears throat> okay. Uh, running wild, getting crazy, experiencing drugs and drugs and drugs. What do we need, uh, John, as human beings to connect to the other side? And why we, do we need, I'm not talking about God, I'm talking about what's, well, in my, in what's my, the need, you in think? My, in my situation. In your case. Mine was because I grew up during an era that was sex, drugs, rock and roll, die young and leave a pretty corpse. That's really what the credo was. Right. And if you look at the back page of the book. Is that your picture? I love yes, that you. picture. And that's a week after John F. Kennedy was assassinated where the innocence was gone. Right there, Gloria. Maybe you can, uh, maybe, I don't know if you can zoom in, but yeah, that's, the, that's, the, that's your picture there. And that's also my inner child. That's the little boy who kept me alive this long. That's the little boy that when I knew that the proverbial shit was about to hit the fan, I told that little boy, you get out of here and I'm gonna find you someday. I don't know how, but I will find you. You just start running. Let me deal with this. Let me do what I have to go through. Let me go through the experiences and the near death and the you know, dancing on the end of the cliff naked on a razor blade with no shoes on a very windy day. Let me do that. Right. And I'll find you. And he's the one who saved me. And God. You believe in of God? Of course, God. Very much. You do. God is everything. God is everything. Power is an illusion or a fact, John? Is that a question? Yes. Now, if you're like, I mean, we're holding a session here in the Congress. Is an illusion or is it a fact? Why are we so uh, we are so attracted to power, money? I'm not attracted fame. to power. We're not. I'm not attracted. Maybe you are. You oh, said uh, we. we. Wait a minute. You said okay, we. Okay, now I'm excluded. I'm not attracted. You okay. presume to assume. Here you go again. Okay. I'm not attracted to power. You know what I'm attracted to? Yes. Greatness. Gratitude. I said greatness. Yes. I'm attracted to. In my estimation, and I don't care what anyone thinks, because I'm still talking, puny and inexhaustible, we have come into an era where mediocrity is accepted as the level. It's true. I don't come from a mediocre time. I had the best of music, the best of art, the best of movies, the best of plays, the best of writers, the best of fashion, the best of times, the best of civility. Now mediocrity sells. Anything goes. Anything goes. It wasn't that way. Yeah. You had to pay your dues. You had to sow your oats. You had to learn your craft. And you had to come out the other side with something to say. Mm. Not, I'm not or never have been attracted to power or money. Right, but they come and go, John, honestly. When we go at the end, when you're alone, when we're dying, when we're scared, God knows that I've been through tough times myself. Yeah. Um, and it's... But what does that have to do with power? Well, somehow, somehow, we as human beings, we are mesmerized by whatever no, you're, we you're, might not power. You're using, but, but you're using the word we again. How about okay, I? I. 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 Well, there but you I'm go. not somebody who's... Right. You know, but what I'm saying right. is that human beings in general, it's a right. common denominator. Right. It, there's ambition in the right. equation, John, when we talk about, I like the scarf, by the way. Thank, Thank you, you very much, and I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Uh, there's a common denominator with people. Where it's, uh, thirst. Right, so let me apply that to my book, because yes. that's why I'm here. Yes. Okay? Yes. I'm not here to talk about the common denominator, no. the political scene, or the world. I'm here to talk about this book. Yes. Okay? Yes. This book, for me, People ask me recently, well, what do you want? I would love if one kid on the planet mm -hmm. 
either was told about this or read this book and it saved their life. Because we have a situation in this country right now, and now I'm going to get deep. We got all these politicians who, in my estimation, are full of shit. Mm -hmm. All of them. Right. I don't agree there, None but that's of them. okay. None of them okay. talk about the heroin and the drug epidemic that we have in this country that's killing kids and killing people every day. And it's a reality. It's a, re it's it's a, a real reality. reality. You know why they don't talk about it? And I don't want to get off on a tangent because I want to talk and but sell this book. But everything is related to it because we're right. talking about humanity because and character, Because the pharmaceutical John. companies that sell the tablets that are funded by the government right. and the heroin that's coming from Afghanistan where we have a war like Vietnam all over again, nobody's talking about it. I don't want to hear about anything else but that, because you know why? It's affecting and killing our youth. I know someone in my life, very close, who 25 of his graduating high school class are dead mm -hmm. from methadone, heroin, Vicodin, overdoses. Right. That's what I want to do with this book. I want to take someone on a ride. We're in the beginning. They think, wow, this is cute. This is great. Isn't this nice? Let's have some popcorn. Let's have some bonbons. It's cute, like going John. on that roller coaster where you get pulled up towards <coughs> that light. And you think, this ain't too bad. And then all hell is unleashed. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't think when I start reading the page, I'm telling you, the reason why I bring up, you know, whatever power or whatever is I consider the humanity. Because corruption somehow is related to the loss of humanity. Okay, and there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, this is a journey, and it's about drugs, it's about life, and the dark, and shadows, and about doubt, and self-doubt, and destruction, and loneliness, right? Yo, can you guys be quiet back there, please? Can yeah. everyone be quiet? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Go you, on. See how, you see how it is, Bob? Yeah, this well, is you know what? what? I'm going to stick around for your show, and I'm going to sing Beatles tunes by request. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> We're back. Thank you, John. I'm You're sorry. You're welcome. But, yeah, it is just distracting when you're trying to have a serious yeah, conversation. Yeah, well, you know what? It's the problem with the planet. Yep. Go on. Is it lack of respect? Let's focus. Whatever it is. Let's focus. No, we're here. I'm here, right. baby. I'm here. What I'm trying to tell you is that the 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 sense of loss of humanity. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the scary side of us, that we feel alone and we're dark and we're stuck, that we feel that we're in mud, that we cannot right. move forward, that right. we're afraid, that we're scared. I mean, all those feelings I experienced when I was reading your pages. Right. You know, and you kind of like, you can't help it to get, obviously, I feel you, John. I was reading the pages and I was feeling you, you know, because it's coming from a truthful place. Well, you know, sometimes you'll see things. Right. You go to a movie, you go to a play, you'll read a book, and you'll go, that's not how, how it was, that's not how people talk, that's not how people are. I've had people say to me, how dare you? How dare you? Mm. But this is my journey. It's your journey. This is it's my journey view. into my past. Right, that's correct. Now, I know we're going to run out of time, so it's available on primeamazon.com and barnesandnobles.com. It's only $20, and it's... It's the truth. It is. It's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in all its ugliness. Yes. Because in my journey, and I can only speak about myself, when I was 17, 18, 19, killing myself with cocaine and heroin and drugs and smoking and sniffing and women and after-hours clubs and situations and situations where there were guns and there were mayhem and there were lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Mm. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it because I thought it was the answer. And what drew me back, what brought me back was the good upbringing of my parents. Right. And knowing that there had to be something more in this life worth living for because I should be gone 32, 40 years already. I should be gone. Yeah. Brown bread, dead, in the ground, in worms. The ground, gone. But yeah. I'm here. Right. And I'm here to talk about it because I'm 60 years old now and I'm coming of an age where my demographic and logistic, we parted, man. We went to Studio 54 every night and basically lived there and yeah. partied and partied and partied and many, many did not make it. Right. And no one talks about that. Right. I'm sorry, I just... That's okay, uh, baby. No one talks about that. Yes, yes. And it's not that I want to be the spokesman of it, but I want people to remember mm -hmm. where we were and then why were we there. Yeah. So, it's a little bit... Yeah, I tell you this much, and I give you my experience from my, my guts when I was reading it. 
It's like you pretty much, it's kind of like you're reading it and then you want to go back to the page again because you want to kind of like relive it. That was interesting, John. Like I'm reading the page and then I go again and then I have to go back. Let me go back to pages again because it's like you have a lot in each paragraph. It's a lot of feeling. It's a lot of guts. It's a lot of pain. You know, I was very fortunate to be around uh, the actor's studio and people like Arthur Penn and, and Norman Mailer. And I remember one time approaching the great Norman Mailer, and I'm not dropping names, it's just no, a fact. No, it's a fact. And I said to him, uh, I think I'd like to write. And he said, write what you know. Uh -huh. Write what you know. Mm -hmm. And the thing you just said is very uh, intuitive of you, sissy, because sometimes when you read something and you go, what did that just say? Mm -hmm. It evokes a memory. Right. It brings it triggers up a time. Something. It triggers something, right? Yes, because most human beings go through the same existence. You know, you're lonely, you're dark, you're broken, you're heartbroken, you're addicted, but you're alive. Mm -hmm. As long as there's blood going through your veins and that heart is beating, you're alive. What kept you going, John? Sorry that I cut you off, baby, but you see the credits are already rolling and I want to keep what asking you What kept me going more. was my, mother, going? my mother, Agnes, and my father, John. Okay. They never gave up on me. Never did. They never, they never approved of what I was doing, but they never gave up on me. They did told me- Did you call me, them every day? I still call them every day. Every day? Every day. That's, that's what kept me going. And when your mother knew that you were not in the right steps, she I'm would not say trying a to prayer. Uh, exactly. She would say a prayer for me. Bring it to me. And my father, Lord rest his soul, said to me, you're very intelligent. It's a shame you don't go to college, which I didn't. And if all else fails, the Catholic Church will take you because you'd make a great priest. And they never gave up on me. They didn't approve of my lifestyle. Right. But they never gave up on me. And, you know, when you plant a tree, if the root isn't right, the tree doesn't grow right. The root was right. The tree went astray in the wind for a while, but now it's straight and bearing fruit. You need to go through the dark to see the light. That's, Absolutely. That's a fact, right, Absolutely. John? Absolutely. If you don't go through the dark, you'll never know the light. Yeah. What you think is light is an illusion. Yeah. Is I, an illusion. They come, you see, I have, I'm, I'm trying to hit you because I want to make sure that I cover every... But I had a note here from the UN, run by the sunny blue... That's kind of like interesting too. Well, you know, I'm not going to give it away, but that was the well. The reason I, I said the UN by Sunny Blue, and thank you very much for bringing that up. Yeah, is that sham that's on First Avenue? It's called the United Nations. It's not the United Nations. It's a hustle. It's aristocrats. It's diplomats. It's money and it's bullshit because they don't do anything and they got no balls. Right. The real United Nations is around the can in the ghetto where people are getting high. Right. And in go the shooting out there, galleries. Take a subway. Go to the people. Go to all the places out there. Go uptown. Go downtown. Go to outside Brooklyn. Go take the subway. Walk the streets. Feel the struggle. See it. Because Forget about it, because everybody, you know what, I, it makes me infuriatedly, honestly upset and sick is when I see all the politicians. Forget about whether it's good, the Here we Democrat, go. or Republican. It doesn't matter. Just take a walk in the wild side. Talk See about the drug. Talk like. about the drug problem. Talk no, about the drug about problem. The drug. The no, not forget nothing. about the drugs. No, because no. if we don't talk no. about the drug problem no, in this country, I'm not, I, no, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. It is needed. I'm going to stop you. That's not the only problem. If we don't talk we about, have, listen John. to me. That's the main problem. Because you know why? And listen to me, sissy. If we if we let these kids get retarded, and I hate to use that word because I don't know another different word on drugs. They can't vote, they can't choose, they can't know, live, baby, they but can't it goes be. Beyond drugs. And it stops. It it's doesn't go beyond drugs. Oh, the, go to the any foundation. Inner, go the to foundation any, is no, not I'm going to get mad John. at you, sissy. Let's go to any up, inner baby. city in any world, and the problem is drugs. Right. It steals your dreams, it steals your soul, it steals your family, it steals your mind, it steals your life. Right. And no but, one wants to talk about it. No, I can talk about it as much as you want. I don't want to get political, though. I didn't come here to talk politics. I came here to talk we'll about, talk about, about the, book. the book. Let's but go back to the book. But what we're talking about, we're in the book because we're talking we're not. about you life. Want to start, you want to start espousing your political views no, and no, I'm not no, interested. No, 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 no. I'm not saying any of that. Let's go back to the book. What I'm saying is that you're talking, this is a journey of a little boy, of a man who yeah. becomes a man, right? right? right. And he experience with drugs, 
Very and, much and so. And very much so, yeah. and heavily. Right. So I understand what you're coming right. from. I'm not right. saying that it's not a serious yeah, problem. Yeah, but you want to go into a political no, bed. No, no, no. Save that for the, the next interview. No, no, no. What, the uh, example I'm, that I'm I was not trying in to politics. give you, the example that I was trying to give you, John, is that human nature is what? complicated. Human nature is it's not, easy, it's to not live. easy to live. It's not easy to be alive. It's not a, Right. Exactly. That's what I got from the book. It's not easy book. to function. That even to a day by day, right. just right. to wake up right. and be. Right. Right. But the message is, message is, the message is, drugs kill. Yes, absolutely. They kill. And they will, in every family in this country, on this planet, there is one person in every family that's affected, afflicted, or dead because of drugs. And no one's talking about it. That's the future. Mm -hmm. If we, listen, we have the past, which I speak about. Right. We have the present, which we're in. Right. If the future is addicted to Vicodin, methadone, heroin, Molly, we're done. We're done as a civilization. Mm -hmm. Then we can be moved around like mice and rats because no one knows what they're doing. Everyone is medicated. No. And it's time for this country. And these yeah. politicians to realize that, listen, I never took a medication in my life that wasn't self-induced. I remember where I went one time to Winthrop Hospital and I said to the lady, I think I have a problem. I want to try to get my life together. And she put three vials of drugs in front of me. Yeah. And I said, what does that do? You remember in Ken Kesey's or the great movie, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? It's medication time. Yeah. People it's need to sad. dig it. White Black, yellow, Spanish, Chinese, Asian, Korean, it is. African, Ghana, Zimbabwe, Irish. People are addicted and afflicted by drugs. And we need to talk about removing it from the picture so that people can be... My life didn't start until I removed it right. from the story. And you know, because you went through heck and hell back Forget and it. forth, I man. should be dead. I should be dead. The World Trade Center picture, can we talk a little bit about father, that? My father, Lord rest his soul, my father John worked on the construction of the World Trade Center. I went there when it was eight stories high, <coughs> excuse me, uh -huh. and it has a lot of relevance to me as it does everyone else. I lost a lot of friends there. So I have that in green. Mm -hmm. And then the skyline of Manhattan, I have in purple for my sister Philomena because that was our shared favorite color. And I just thought that it was, you know, an, another New York story. It, 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 it can apply to anyone. You can interchange the characters and the names, the ethnicities and the, and, and the, the ethnic and, and the religious beliefs. It's just a, a story about getting to the other side and finding out who you are and finding out that maybe when you're an afflicted, addicted kid that you never realized that you could grow up to be a neurosurgeon. Mm. A rocket scientist, a poet laureate, a mm. dancer, an actress, an mm -hmm. interviewer. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, but you're, like I said, John, when mental illness is another big problem, Absolutely. huge problem. Okay, uh, when we talk about drugs and what politicians do, what they say, I agree with you. I honestly agree that if you really want to know what it's like and you want to fix the world, yeah. you have to get out there and smell that fucking crowd. Excuse my language. Yeah, you do. And learn and see the suffering and see the pain and see where we come from. But it, You know, not, one it, of my favorite it, films is by Frank Capra. It's called Meet John Doe. And I haven't seen him. It's incredible. Seen it's incredible. It's my favorite. And I was inspired by so many people. I, th I think that the best thing that the United States government did for me was give me a library card. Because when I was younger and sitting in a Catholic school where I was being taught by nuns who were reading me lies out of Houghton Mifflin textbooks, I would go to the library and go, there's got to be more to the planet. There's got to be more to the stories. Mm -hmm. So I read people like Faulkner and Dumas and uh, Flannery O'Connor and Graham Greene, and Mark Twain, oh, and, and Mark Hans Twain. Christian Andersen. And I realized that there's more in the world, and there's people with voices, and the spirits, and the stories, and they're all applicable. Charles Dickens, Tom, Charles Tom, Dickens, Dr. Tom Dr. Brown's Dr. school days. My it's favorite. all applicable, because the thing is, nothing changes in life. Everyone thinks that everything, we're all the same. We all bleed the same way. We all go to the bathroom the same way. 
we all live under the same sky and nothing really changes. Mm -hmm. Nothing changes. Here's the deal. You're born, you learn, you love, you succeed, you try to do good deeds, you die, you're gone, somebody mentions your name once in a while. Finito. Yeah, but if you're lucky and blessed, if you can leave a legacy, if you can bring something to this world and making the world a better place, John, whether you write a book or you do an interview, whether you do and defend the case, or whether you do and, Absolutely. I don't know, sue everybody, because in this country, everybody sues everybody. Uh, it's a not, national uh, sport. <laughs> let's not get into that. But uh, What do you mean, it, let's not get into it? You're the one who brought it up. Uh, okay. It's everybody you want to steer into everybody. a different direction. Everybody sues everybody. It's so what I'd like incredible. everyone to do is buy my book, Stoop Please. to Conquer. And the reason why we get politically insane is because life is a journey, and each one of life us... Life is a dance. Life it is, is a joy. Baby. And it is a joy, but it's, it's a wonderful thing, but it's a painful thing, too. Uh, it's a struggle, And baby. you know what? If it's you a, do want to get political, here's what needs to be done. People need to start getting a little loud, a little noisy, yeah. because that's what got us here. We threw the English out. We took their tea. We threw it in the huts and made the biggest cup of tea on the planet. We need to get a little loud and a little noisy. You we got a lot of problems going on. We got oh, a lot yes, of problems going on do. on this planet right now. We do. This big blue ball that we treat with such disdain is losing its bounce. So we need to, and what I really believe and what my vocation is going to be for the rest of my life is to talk to the kids. Yes. Ask them what they want to be, what they want to do. Love them. What are their dreams? Love them. Who right. are they? What are they coming from? Uh -huh. I look for those kids that look tired in the middle of the day and ask them, are you having troubles at home? Mm. It ain't easy being a kid. No. It ain't easy being green. Right. It really isn't. Right. And it ain't easy trying to find out who you are, who you want to be. Yeah. But if we can get some of the shit out of the way. If we can do it, that would be great. But like I said, once again, John, um, shadows and shadows. We All of us, we have... I don't know nothing about come, that shadows and shadows well, stuff. John, that's, that's nothing that I'm interested in, well, shadows I and am. shadows. And I tell you, know you what when I'm interested I was in? reading I'm this... I'm interested in the light. Well... Shadows and shadows explore, is a whole different thing. Well, to explore, like you said, to see the light, you have to explore the dark. Yeah. And there but there are is, no shadows is, in the dark. It is black, baby, but there's and no painful, shadows. and it's deep, okay? When I was reading this book, it's, it's deep. It's deep, John. It's, it's raw. Well, it's got to be deep. It's, um, it's got to be it's, deep. It's a sense of, like, obviously the sense of danger, but the sense of not... You know, not not sure. Like it's, it's the edge, the set, the edge. That's the word that I well, was it's looking be deep. for. That's the B, the edge, and the. You and know, the when deep. you dive into the oceans of the planet, you don't just skim. You want to go down and look at the bottom, and you want to see what's on the bottom. You want to bring something up. Right. You got to go. You got to go deep, 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 deep. deep you got to hold back. your breath. You got to go down where you almost have to decompress for ten years, and try mm -hmm. to figure out. <laughs> I remember. <coughs> excuse me. I remember when I first got sober. And it was a great moment because I was two seconds away from being dead. And I thought, there's got to be another way. I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I went to see this old doctor. He was an old doctor that would come. His name was Dr. Patero. And he would come and he would visit you. He'd climb five flights of stairs to visit you. An old neighborhood doctor. And he said to me, what's wrong? And I said, you know what, doctor? I'm, I'm vomiting. I'm sick. I'm sweating. I'm trembling. I'm convulsing. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I burnt myself out. He said, yes, you have. Mm -hmm. I said, and I really feel like I burnt half my brain. He said, yes, you did. Mm. And I went, well, what should I do? He said, walk into the other side. Yeah. Walk into the other side. It's true. It's true. And that's what I would like to achieve with this book. This is my journey, my friend's journey, but it's a very applicable journey to everyone because people struggle and suffer and hurt themselves. Yeah. Today, while I was preparing to come see you, I was listening to the greatest hits of Michael Jackson. Yeah. Michael Jackson. What a genius. What a, gen beyond what a genius. genius. Beyond me the too, genius. Beyond the genius. Beyond the genius. But you see, And John you know why he's not here? Well... Drugs. Yeah. Prescribed by a doctor. Yeah. Who didn't take responsibility. Amy Winehouse. Another, another genius. Another case. Another case. You know why she's not here? Because she couldn't deal with the pain in life, so she escaped into a bottle and a needle, and a snort. Yeah, it's Okay, sad. so we need to remove that, because can you imagine that we'd have Janis Joplin, we'd have Jimi Hendrix, 
We'd have Brian Jones. I could go on and on and on. When you can't take the pain, you just toss the cards in. Yeah. And I was blessed to not toss the cards in and be able to talk about it. So we had to bring a world of more compassion and Absolutely. understanding, John. And gratitude. And gratitude. And it, that's how you close. I have right here on your book, right here. It's beautiful, John.